Hi everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 2. I'm your host, Budiel, and I'll be guiding you all through one of my favorite games of all time, which is the second installment in the Baldur's Gate series. Now, this is the second game in the series. I I would have actually wanted to start with the first game, which is every bit as good as this one, but unfortunately my CDs were destroyed whenever I moved houses. Um, they slid out of the, two of them slid out of the case and got scratched up pretty horribly. So they're completely unreadable. As a result, I can't install the game or play it. But this one is also very good. It's still one of the best games in history, in my opinion. There's a few differences from the first game. In particular, as the player, you start off as a bit higher level. Now, while that does mean that some of the enemies will also be higher level, it also means that it makes the game still a little bit easier just because there are plenty of times in the first game where you will simply die at such a low level be you'll die you'll die in one hit so yeah that's not too likely to happen in this game now in this one though mages and priests, but mostly mages in the unmodded game are far more powerful than they are in the first game. Now hopefully that isn't something that well, actually as you'll, you'll see it as we as we continue on. And I'm sorry, I'm sort of winging this whole thing. So, doing my best to provide commentary here. I am going to be playing this game with two mods installed. One is the Baldur's Gate 2 Fix Pack, which is an unofficial patch released by a, a large team of Baldur's Gate modders in an attempt to fix everything that the game designers themselves didn't fix. in their patch and yes I do I also I do have this game completely patched up I'm also going to be running with Sword Coast Stratagems installed with both the Mage and Priest AI enhancements put on I'm not running any of the other AI or fight enhancements from that mod so that's that's going to be it. Otherwise, this is a completely unmodded game. Just I want to show you guys as much as I can, and I feel that doing it without mods is the best way to do that. At least starting out, a number of the mods can make the game much more challenging. They can add a variety of fights. They can add a number of quests. There's a lot of new NPC mods available. Basically, for for a game that came out when this did, I believe it came out in 2001 or so. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it came out in 2001. Maybe maybe it was before that. I got my copy of Throne of Ball in 2002. So to think there's actually still a very very active community of enthusiasts producing mods and everything else for this game it's amazing the staying power it has I suppose that shouldn't really be surprising though as it is a lot more content heavy than most games that come out today to complete every single quest in Shadows of Almond and thrown a ball together, it can take somewhere in the range of one to two hundred hours. 
it is possible to completely finish the game in about 40 to 40 to 50 hours if you just do the absolute minimum required but I can't really recommend that because well there's a lot of good content here and it's a it's a it would be a shame to just completely miss out on all of it so that's not what we're gonna do in this LP and instead I'm going to be taking you all through a number of the side quests too some of my favorites and perhaps some of yours I'm hoping to do this with it's not with a little bit of interactivity it's not going to be a fully interactive LP but if there is something that you might be interested in seeing or you know something that you missed every time you went through the game or something like that just go ahead and shoot me a message or post a comment on the video and I'll see what I can do about incorporating it into into an episode so with all of that said I hope you enjoy I hope you enjoy the LP and I hope you enjoy the game <laughs>